Archimax login confirmed. Welcome to the Lodge. You've accessed the LodgeCast experience. Warning, warning. Dangerous spoilers ahead. Enjoy. The LodgeCast is a little podcast where we watch weird movies. So you don't have to. The LodgeCast, baby. LodgeCast, gonna smoke this. LodgeCast. And Bishki. Episode 181. Megalopolis. Hello and welcome to a self-financed episode of the Lodgecast. I'm your Lodgemaster. With me as always is Brother Bishki. This is the end. Oh, we got Brother Lucas in the back. I love the smell of film bomb in the morning. Oh no. We got Brother Nathan rounding back it here. out. Apocalypse, wow. The day has finally come. Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis. 50 years in the making. A or something fable. Like that. A, a, f- a fable. fable. Does it have an under? under <laughs> <line>? <laughs> a fable told in 16 parts. So, Nathan, you mm. were part of our godfather yeah, yeah i my, thought back on that today Michael, coda. Yeah, yeah. my brother was on there too what yeah. was that Other one stuff. called the coda mike the death of so Michael the, Corleone. <laughs> oh the third one yeah and we were talking about how we had saw the godfather saga you know right. how it was all junk together right uh, and that's how we saw it first and still enjoyed it but so uh, that brings us to now. Yeah. Well, we also covered Apocalypse Now. We did. The final <laughs> yeah. cut in third row, second row, face IMAX, melt zone, yes. IMAX. Yeah. We're not doing face melt tonight, but we are seeing it in IMAX before uh, it flees theaters. It, before hey. Joker 2 comes in. And on discount night. On <laughs> discount night. <laughs> discount night. And it's packed. One of the only packed audiences in the world. It will start packed. But how, how many? Far? How many walk like, out? How far are we into the run of it? So it's just been a week. This it's, is like it. it. It's like five days. Yeah. <laughs> and terrible it is reviews. Bombing. Nineteen hundred screens. What's like, the budget? One hundred thirty. One hundred. But one hundred twenty, and the self financed, and oh, it, it's made five million dollars so far. Oh. In twenty four oh. film markets, there's like thirty six theaters doing the ultimate experience, where there's like live performance yeah, in the audience. But that's what? only at the AMC Century and City I, fifteen I think, IMAX. I think the movie is going to throw it to us, or throw it to a person. Wait, the wait, no wait, one, no one will the, stand up. The Grommans Chinese, Chinese slow, IMAX. Slow <laughs> way the fuck down and explain yeah. what you just said. Yeah, the ultimate experience. There's like a scene, I guess, uh, where the audience, yeah, can ask questions or throw <laughs> questions. Like uh, driver talks to, yeah, the, he throws it to the audience, what, and someone's supposed to step up. What in this is experience? This? Like, but yeah, not at our theater. We're at the Burbank 16 IMAX. But if we were in Century City, Hollywood, <laughs> oh. or Irvine, or the Sunset Five. They're like 6.40 p.m. <laughs> and like, yeah, 8 p.m. showings where I guess someone shows up and interacts. I mean, Whoa, yeah. and I think I think the live theater also has like someone reading voiceover or something. So maybe there's more to so it. Like a 4D element. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I'm not sure how that's going to translate to streaming. Well, now that it's a flop, they're not going to pay that extra, those extra bucks for actors to show up at these appearances. Uh, think about yeah. it. Yeah. What, I mean, what are we getting into, boys? There ain't no way, folks. This Coppola has not made a good film in over <laughs> well, that's 30 <laughs> years. And Have you been keeping up with, with old old Coppola and his, and his antics? I saw Tetro, which was not good. Okay. Hmm. And that was considered like the high point of his late career. Right. And I think I got off the train after Jack. Yeah, Oof. yeah. Anyone seen to... Twixt? I tried. Yeah, yeah. No, but I did Tetro, too. I tried Tetro. I couldn't do either. (laughs) Twixt, I watched the trailer for. Check that out. Val Val Kilmer, (laughs) murder mystery, small town with Bruce Dern. And 
Ellie Fanning. And I found looked, the Rainmaker pretty lackluster as well. Yeah. And Youth Without Youth, anyone? anyone? I tried that one oh, too. Yeah. I couldn't do it. <laughs> These are all movies I, I pulled the ripcord on. His later career involves that wine though. And I've enjoyed that. <laughs> the wine. <laughs> the wine is fully financing this tonight's movies. So, he's made more money on that wine yeah, than yeah. any of the films. Well, listen, got, the letterboxed graph for this movie <laughs> is what I like to see. It's the lodge formation. Either it's all fives and all ones making like a field goal upright or it's <laughs> all the way across even. It's even amounts of ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives. Those are the lodgiest films. <laughs> and this one's got it just a plateau across the board. It's all over the place. Mm -hmm. People don't know what to make of this. <laughs> if to, yeah. to expect anything, it's going to defy like everything. It's just, it's good. It's not going to play. <laughs> it's not going to play in any kind of commercial way. And it's a um, full, so I'm down for that, I like guess. we can't emphasize enough. It's a full pack to the gills IMAX screening. Yeah, like this is like cool. Lion King style. Yeah. Packed. Yeah, there's gonna be a revolt. Like <laughs> there'll be walkouts, right? Can we see? But it's through like the... anybody going to this, they're not thinking it's fast and the furious. Like everybody going to this, yeah, knows so it still has to be. Prepared. It's Coppola time. Yeah, and they know it. My, it's probably the swan song of the master. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna try, but you know, much like with Madame Web in the very same IMAX. People can turn on it, and there's so many people here that there's got to be at least a 25% faction that's ready to turn on Just it. Just ready yeah. to slam dunk yeah. it, you know? No, so, I, I think there'll be a level of respect that Madam Webb didn't demand, but... <laughs> but <laughs> did not demand. I've closed my eyes during the yes. trailer, so oh. I, haven't, I haven't seen a frame of this film. Yeah. And I, I, I and I've closed my eyes multiple times, and 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 I'm uh, I'm the cast is pretty amazing, Bonkers. starry, starry, yeah, and because uh, everybody wants to get on the Coppola train one last everybody time. Everybody that yeah. he called said yes is what it has to be. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm excited. I'm excited too. I mean, this is my this is probably my most anticipated movie of the year oh. because I did open my eyes during the trailer once, and I. I was blown away. I'm like, holy shit, this fable's coming to this theater. <laughs> so what shit. is that? What is the runtime? If I can ask right up front. It's 220? Mm, no, I think it's shorter. I think 218. It's 218. Oh, 218. Is it? Two, two 218 minutes shorter. Program. Okay. I thought it was shorter. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh man, that's gonna level <laughs> that's gonna level discount night. It's gonna I level mean, us. It's just gonna take all just, the heads off in the front row. Well, <laughs> listen. Do you think there's going to be a drink at McGuffin's? Oh, God. <laughs> the, the cup of Coppola. <laughs> it's got caffeine the new in Rome. it. It's got the caffeine new and future Rome. Coppola wine. The cup of the Coppola. Listen. Oh, could feature his wine. That'd be so shit. We, yeah. we are a certain way now, and we will be changed when you next hear our voices. Yeah. So pray for us, y'all. We're going to go be citizens of megalopolis and let you know if it deserves to be a megaflopolis <laughs> love and light y'all love and light y'all big cities great buildings megalopolis skyscrapers the fever is all over the town Fast rockets, huge planes, gigantic boats and fancy cars. The humans are living for themselves. Remember where you come from, you're not alone on the scene. Remember what you are You're just a dot on the screen Love, baby Love um, uh, I am... Uh...
completely stunned. We got mega <laughs> lopalized. Wow, Whoa. platinum, y'all. <laughs> Building cities, baby. Megalon, baby. Wow. I mean, I said we'd be different. Design after, authority, <laughs> roll out. After coming out of that, but I didn't know how different. I mean... I think my brain chemistry done changed, y'all. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> that's one it's, long golden shower. Man. <laughs> <laughs> right on our fucking face, man. man. Oh, my God. Uh, well, what an as, experience. <laughs> as we walked into the IMAX, again, this was in the IMAX, people. IMAX Pack. MC. I'm there kidding. was a there was a huge picture of the Joker in mid kick as if he was kicking it out yeah, unceremoniously. Yeah. I think this really is the last <laughs> night it, it will ever show night, in IMAX. Yeah. And that I mean, all I'll say is this: if you're gonna see it, see it as big as possible. Because goddamn, before we get into this golden lobotomy shower. <laughs> Run tomatoes.com. Megalopolis is a Roman epic set <laughs> in an imagined modern America. Yeah. The city of New Rome must change, causing conflict between Caesar Catalina, Adam Driver, a genius artist who seeks to leap into a utopian idealistic future, and his opposition, Mayor Franklin Cicero, Giancarlo Esposito, who remains committed to a regressive status quo perpetuating greed, special interests, and partisan warfare. <laughs> Torn between them is a socialite, Julius Cicero, Natalie Emanuel, nice. the mayor's daughter, who, <laughs> whose love for Caesar has divided her loyalties, forcing her to discover what she truly believes humanity deserves. Period. Boom. Period. That doesn't even touch the surface. A fable. That doesn't, doesn't, doesn't even touch fable? the surface. That doesn't not, cover the magic mirrors. That's not even a little nail scratch on the oh, surface man. of Megalopolis. Yeah. Oh, man. So, uh, Coppola. I don't think we're going to be able to really cover this plot too closely. I mean, it's all spectacle. There is no plot. The, <laughs> there's a plot. <laughs> there's no plot. <laughs> There's a whisper. There's plot. a whisper of a glow of a plot. Yeah. There's a concept of an idea <laughs> of a plot. But well, there's definitely a glow of a plot. So we get in there and it is fucking packed. There are people in the face melt zone, third row, second row, maybe even yeah. a little first Film row. Film geeks, people on dates, all lots of, of guys. All <laughs> Tons of loners. Like eight, eight group of guys going, slapping high fives. And a lot of, Tons yes. of film dudes. And a lot of Travis Bickle loners mm -hmm. just intensely looking Definitely. at the screen. And we got these chuckleheads behind oh, us. Man. Just the worst of the worst. The exact, Always. the exact people that we didn't want to sit behind us. They sat down. One of them was like, I'm really afraid people are going to laugh at this film. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's showing some self-awareness. Yeah. yeah. But then whenever the trailer noise would die down, they'd be making jokes real loud. Trying the to worst, get a, the worst joke. Trying really to get the whole voice. theater to laugh. Uh, and, uh, I, hate that. I was worried I'd have to yell at these chuckles. Oh. Yeah. I was like, we're going to have a problem. And, I just knew we were going to have a problem. And they were finger on the trigger of their laugh gag reflex the whole time. Like everything uh, popping off was like <laughs> Yeah, I didn't, I didn't then, realize I mean there was there was an isolated barking too. And there was, so we'll get to this barking. But there was a there was a different man. He was a loner off to, off on the right who would I get see. them riled up, kind of like hyenas in the wild. Oh, he was getting me. This riled. guy was getting wild. He had, he had Tourette's. Uh, he he has for the record. He so, had okay, Tourette's. I mean, okay. I, I kind of like, got, yeah, I stepped off the heat a little because I like, yeah. couldn't help but laugh at his laugh because it was like, fucked it, up. It, it was some fucked up. Shit. It was wood. It was woodland creature, like deeply wild yeah, laugh. It was like howling. Oh, it was like, well, it was like, it was like a whoa. <laughs> And then, and, then, and then he would get the chuckle heads riled up because that would give them permission to laugh. Anyway, I had no idea how close to Madam Web this was going to be. I, in I terms could of feel it. I could <laughs> feel it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even the first shot is just of a low angle shot of like a high rise, and this this wild man was like, oh, that's that's what we were dealing with. But 
to be fair, the movie is funny. Like it is definitely. It's, there's some. It's funny. supposed to be it, intentionally funny. Well, yes. You well, think you think yes. it's intentional. It's both. You it think he both. scripted it out and he rehearsed and beat it out all the jokes in this movie. You think all the laughter in that theater was that's was not, earned and that's, planned out. That's not what I'm saying. No. I'm saying it's, it's both. both. It's both intentional and unintentional. Yeah. Like a lot of those moments were meant to be funny and people laughed as such. A yeah. lot of them weren't meant to be funny and people laughed even harder. So <laughs> that's right in the lodge zone. Yes. That's where we live. Absolutely. It just sucks when <laughs> you have people just like pushing, straining on the pot to laugh at every they single thing that's laugh. going on. They yeah. made they, it. They felt it was going to be stuffy. They, were, they weren't going to like it. And right. then they just, oh, you know, they laugh oh. at anything that's, that's a, <laughs> it's a glimmer. I mean, you cast, you cast Aubrey Plaza, right? Yes. She's going to give you comedic the delivery. character Wow Platinum is her yeah. name. Wow Platinum. And, and and every time she said a joke, I mean, you're supposed to laugh. Yeah. I was laughing at her. Yeah. I assume, Lucas, you weren't laughing at all? I, I was laughing at the weird Tourette's laugh. <laughs> you were laughing <laughs> at the, the laugh. And then there was that like one you. scene where Dustin Hoffman was like, oh, look at that. And I like laughed at the, how bad that was. You and I, like, looked, I looked at Nathan and we both laughed <laughs> yeah, at each other. Was, we were like, what the fuck I, is this shit? And drunk John Voight. You weren't la laughing at John way. Voight? Come you were like, laughing at John. We got no. Regal Voight. Johnny we Boyd. got Dustin Hoffman. We got, we got dragon characters. We got Shia. Wazoo. We got... Aubrey, we got Driver, and the weakest link in the chain, Nathalie Emanuel. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Who was doing yeah. a table read, like sleepwalking? <laughs> oh, that I don't, she's so I don't beautiful. Think, yeah, her she face really is, is so beautiful. She was Come in on. a circus. That is movie. unfortunate because her performance really could have taken this to another level, where you're actually maybe you know the rubber's hitting the road with some of these <laughs> plot beats, but it is pretty bad. And it's hard to overlook. It's almost Sofia Coppola level. Not that far, Oof. but whiffs of Sofia in Godfather 3. But the dialogue is so ridiculous. The dialogue is absolutely ridiculous. You got, like, you got dialogue. You got voiceover. You got Hamlet. You, you got, got Marcus Lawrence Australia's Fishburne. Shakespeare verse. You got Fishburne as the de facto narrator. You got these, Chauffeur narrator. And sometimes they cut to him or the camera lands on him and he's reading. He's like, reading. Like, like he's reading this into his little his little video. He has like a little audio recorder in his yes. ring. Did you notice that? And Emmanuel had one too yep. where she's dictating exactly what she's Did the seen. historians. And there's also stone carved stone tablets that are graphics that he reads from full screen that i mean yeah. this is one of those movies where you have no idea where you are when you're yeah. halfway through it you don't know what act you're in you don't know how long it's gonna go yeah because there's no form or shape it's all just scenes crashing into each other yes. yeah cuts of just random shit like b-roll and the question is are you going to surrender yourself to little Lord Francis or yes, not? Yes. Like, are you going to fight against? Are you going to swim against the tide? Or are you going to take it and be like, man, this is hella pompous, but it's all in. You have to make that choice. You have to be all in if you know what it's about and you don't know what it's about because it's all gibberish. It's all double <laughs> mumbo jumbo. Well, the main point that I gleaned from it is just Francis talking about his own ambition and how there's not enough time to realize all the things that he has, all the wonderful yeah, fruits sure. it's that a, he has for us. It's a man who's just, he's read so many books, he's seen so many movies, he's consumed so Francis. much art, and he's just putting it all up there, yes. willy-nilly, topsy-turvy, on the screen. All that jazz. All and, of it. Uh, and, yeah, it's... It's a lot. <laughs> once I got on the wavelength, which took a little while... This guy, I wasn't sitting next to you. It would have gone faster. <laughs> where did we you Where did you him. connect with the wavelength there, Bish? <laughs> at the... Dra at, well, I don't know where to put... I don't know where the you dragons dragon? start and the dragons end. It is a giant dragon. This, yeah, yeah. this no thing is like this. a bag of croutons that get crushed up and thrown into the air and pixie dust. <laughs> it's yeah. like you know, a like, bag of croutons that gets crushed and, and wetted and then wetted. formed into a dragon-shaped being cool. well, i don't know if we're gonna go through frosted flake you know but i think the main extended dragon would be 
the wedding reception yes. of our dear John Voigt at the Coliseum a- and and With, yeah. uh, Gladiator Games and Wrestling and Wild, Wild Platinum Wild Platinum Aubrey Plaza. We'll give that a the bonafide we'll, dragon. We'll no? give that an honorary dragon to cover the rest of it. The Salad Dragon. A scene in a movie that is so bizarre, baffling, or transcendent that it instantly justifies the price of admission. Or Reese Witherspoon's leafy transformation in A Wrinkle in Time. Yes, yeah, because there's dragons popping off everywhere. Croutons and salad dragon characters popping off everywhere everywhere almost everywhere i mean it's hard to explain this with words like you have to you have to see it you You have have to to see see the visual effects the visual effects (laughs) you have to see i mean it's such it's such a, a mixture of like pushing digital effects farther than where they are now and mm-hmm. kind of uh that being funny in a way but also kind of like holy shit he's really going for that okay yeah plus using digital effects to mimic a lot of the in camera stuff that people love from like Bram Stoker's yeah. and all the other okay. shit that he's like fascinated by like we have the these parts of this Russian satellite raining down over the city and as the streaks of light go past the buildings you see reflections of people cowering on the building about to get hit it's like that kind of stuff yeah yeah, that was powerful very old-fashioned but very I don't know like you don't see that shit ever no, Unless no. Francis is making a movie. I mean, yeah. there's a crouton when Adam Driver's doing like his Shiva arms are yes. popping out. Solid crouton. I mean, like you just cut those together. That's 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 a nice big crouton. You could have like 15 solid minutes of visual croutons that you could just <sighs> yeah, I break mean, this down into. We have something called the Archimax, which we log into every time we get on this podcast. But it usually <laughs> involves <laughs> salad dragon visuals. Yes. And to de- try to describe them on the podcast is very difficult. It's almost but, blasphemous. But there's times when you're just in the Archimax and, yes. and, and, and you just your mind just reels. Megalopolis is the city that houses <laughs> the Archimax, for sure. <laughs> so uh, I think I was in from the get-go. I think I was, it was, it's immediately so pretentious. Yeah. Wildly pretentious. Wild, so wildly pretentious that I was in awe of its pretension. Yeah. (laughs) And I just went with it because it is funny. Once you reach that cruising altitude, it's funny on its own terms, you know, and it's entertaining. It's way too long, of course. But how could a movie like this be 90 minutes? Like the whole point of it is pushing ambition way past the breaking point. Yeah. So Lucas, were you ever in? No. <laughs> no, I was I was in for that opening like cold open where he stops time. I yeah. was like, all right. Yeah. You know, and the title stings us. I'm like, all right, that's that's all right. And then like the very next scene when, when people started talking and opening their mouth, I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about this. It just felt phony and yeah, pretentious, artificial, stilted, flat. Like I just, right off the bat, if you don't believe in this new Rome, you know, the 21st century, <laughs> 3000 AD, whatever the fuck, yeah. it's pretty much then New you're York. out and it's I'm New out. New York at Magic Hour. Like, like you know, yeah, I, I thought yeah. Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow looked like a more believable city. Mm. The Megalopolis, yeah. you know, it just for right off the bat, I do not buy into this world that Lawrence Fishburne's voiceover is just hand waving over. Yeah, and and you in your first opening image, which is very striking, with him stopping time like a superhero, like Doctor Strange or whatever, but then it never <laughs> pays off. It's like, why are you showing us this? This is like circle jerking you know and then he like can't do it because he got beat up but then he can't because he's in love with her but i'm like so i'm like shrugging yeah the time stopping is more uh broadly thematic i think that actual tied to any sort of plot hmm. 
And that's the kind of shit you gotta let go. It yeah. just looks cheap too. I mean, it looks like no, I don't it looks, think it looks. It looks cheap. like it oh. looks like a student feature trying no. to do bad. Oh, the, mo- the money's on the screen. The money's there, no, it's but, not. But, no, it's not. No, Those but I'm not. The they're shooting no, around. No, there's like maybe twelve people in the scene, and it just looks there's, bad. There's, I'm not saying it looks, looks good. Bad. I'm not saying it looks, it looks good. shallow. It looks. It looks like a really expensive and like cheap. idiocracy meets like. Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, yes. like it's just, yeah. it's garish. It's really, it's Sex in the City meets Jersey Shore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's like it's, with Joel Schumacher elements of like never, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. You every single scene, you're seeing something you've never seen before, yeah. and you'll never see again. For better or for worse, there are some times where you can tell, you know, there's like 10 people crowded in front of a green screen, B and I rate with with picket signs or whatever. But there are also scenes like the Coliseum where it's huge and it's crazy and it's it's shit that you And there's a pop star that <laughs> Becomes five pop stars while a sex scene plays on the jumbotron. Well, she wears a see-through dress made of, of <laughs> Megalon. Megalon. Megalon, the unobtainium of this. Oh, film. I think that's too invisible. I think that's where I was in. Where yes, <laughs> that, yes. where that pop singer was splitting, and and the, it was an extended play of that yes. song. So mm-hmm. she, not, he, you know, Francis. You can feel Francis in that moment, knighting that yes. actress or whatever, and and that's what it kind of felt like. He was throwing out, you know, chocolate chocolate uh, coins to everybody. Yes. You know, Audrey, he's like, I got a good role for you, honey, but you got to wear this. Right, you got to wear a see through dress. So you kind of feel him more than than I thought. And, and and Adam Driver is such a you know such a alter ego for him. Yes, and absolutely. Yes, yeah. himself in that. I thought he was great in this. I, I thought, thought he was, Driver was. I thought perfect. he was yeah. fully committed. Yeah. And it's just like whatever Francis said, it's like, yes, sir. Yeah. I will fucking go all the way with this. And he and, felt like he was improv yeah. like he was he was doing jazz, sure. like he was just like just doing Shakespeare. Throwing weird yeah, he was de- definitely doing jazz in those uh montages Ooh, in his please. office where they're all like working <laughs> on the R and D. And think about describing him a little bit. You know, he has a Caesar you know, he's got that Caesar the haircut. haircut. Yeah. yeah but he also Caesar has cuts. like, you know, black capes that he it, and it, he kinda hunches for and he like like, no, he kind of dances around while he talks. He'll do like a spin move and then he'll clap you know, his hands. It's yeah. like anything goes in this fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. Everybody had full, complete reign to do whatever they wanted. And I love that. Yeah. Like, you don't see that. It's, it's whatever comes through that IMAX, ne- the next five movies, you're not going to fill a thimble full of yeah. the what the fuck that this There is, is nothing conventionally bad about this movie there's nothing there's no convention to what's bad there's bad stuff in it throughout (laughs) yes but there's but it's inventing its own bad but it it's it has it has no you're never just like oh that's obvious like (laughs) right right but right yeah i come back to it's like it's ideas yes you know a a lot of the ideas weren't really tracking you know they they're not your a a ideas think of think of some of the (laughs) stuff that he's populating the film we do we we, they go up on a ramp but then they kind of stop you know we do got a MAGAopolis thing yes, going on. Yes, we do. Oh, we do Ma- have Sh- Sh- Shia LaBeouf playing the uh, the kind of Trump surrogate. And, and, it- and I've heard, uh, you know, Coppola in the press is like, he basically is convinced that Trump is going to win in 2024. And he's like, you'll see that we will decline and our na- our nation he's just throwing will crumble. And- <laughs> but I like to present a utopian ideal to strive for because we need to have hope, you know? And that's yeah. kind of, you know, where that whole plot is headed. Yeah. And even, o- even though he ends on an upbeat note. And only in this topsy-turvy world do we get John Voight <laughs> shooting Shia LaBeouf with a bow and arrow in the ass twice, killing twice. basically, basically taking out the Trump surrogate. Yes, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Does it's, Voight even know? I, Does Voight even know what's happening? Yeah, it's kind of a strange movie that you can't really recommend this as an experience, but the certain, I mean, certain viewers. I recommend to certain viewers. I recommend Francis Ford Coppola completist. I recommend it in the theater. You got to wait. Like this was really, yeah. You got to wait till it shows up at, at a revival sometime. Like it plays at the Egyptian or something. You have to wait until you don't have a phone that's going to be beckoning you. You can't 
You can't watch this. Jeez, this is gonna this is gonna are, die at home. How many people are gonna be streaming this? Like oh, this is man. not. This gonna is gonna, gonna die popular. at home. <laughs> Shit on, yeah. on Tubi. Yeah. It's not gonna be popular, man. No. This is this is a movie that people will return to long after Francis's death, and they will reappraise it or appraise it for the first time, and they will get such nutrients from it. Yeah. But it is not. It's it, it's like right now is not the time for it to be understood. <laughs> oh, that's that's pretty. I know? will say, sad, dude. I will say it I, is sad. I will know? say I would love to listen to Francis Ford Coppola's commentary on this movie. Yeah, yes. I'm curious about what he's saying. You yeah. know, I hope he re- he had to have recorded a commentary. Yeah, right? he will or he well, will. Mike yeah, Figgis yeah. directed a documentary. Yes. about the making Ooh, of the movie. That's about true. making of this movie and was on set every day. Ooh, so and there was sure. a lot of shit that went down. I'm yeah. sure that'll be interesting. If Who's quitting and stuff? She's the light of the day. Yeah. Like get the 4K of this one. I really, I really want to see that. There were a lot of odd, you know, like cameos again of actors. I was like, wow, man, DB Sweeney, Sweeney. Sweeney. Yes. <laughs> you know. And I saw Bell Zargetti for just one second. I didn't in see the him. center of frame. I saw his face, and he said a line. I think you said <laughs> Bell Zargetti. I was like, hey, and I was like, wait, what? Oh, yeah, Bell Getty. I, th- I thought you sneezed or something. Bell Getty. Bell Getty. <laughs> yeah, they were the cameos were coming fast in the early t- period, like when Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> And pops in and, just, and Dustin's wearing just a you know a black kimono with a cape. I think and they it's cut, just his head. It felt like Dick <laughs> Tracy without head. the makeup. Dick Tra- yeah. There was a lot of Dick yeah. Tracy no, vibes. right off yeah. the street. Maybe a little powder on his I face. I think but. uh half of Dustin's plot got cut out and they just showed a just little big chunks of little flashback of him. Out. It felt like a lot of stuff got cut out. They showed a little flashback of like a pillar falling out. Yeah, can you imagine what's not in this? Oh my god. And, and think of oh yeah. my first go was four and a half hours. I mean I'm sure. What, I'm sure the first cut of Megalopolis was well beyond four hours. This, I mean, two hours and 20 felt like at least three. I have to say. I mean, the art direction, like, I mean, I, I, I see the money on screen there. Yeah, <laughs> you absolutely. Know, to, to counter, there's money. The the Chrysler, his Chrysler place was, I thought was pretty cool. I want to live yeah. at the top of the Chrysler building. Yeah. And, and that, and that whole, that whole set piece in the opener kind of set me up like, you know, like this character, this dark artist or whatever. Yeah. So I was kind of intrigued <laughs> by the locale and that you could look over the city that he was building. Yeah. So art direction was just on, on the screen. I am. Yeah. I am completely on board with everything visually in this movie. Even the shit that doesn't quite work. I'm mm-hmm. extra with it. Cause mm-hmm. I'm like, you tried bro. <laughs> There's a lot to process. You know? We're, a lot. We, we got hit with a lot you. folks. Like yeah. we don't, we don't have the uh, processing power to have completely <laughs> yeah. absorbed what we just witnessed. The, yeah. The time-lapse flower photography unfolding the, the split screens. Oh my you know God. I mean? It's just endless. Yeah. And Bishki had a little bathroom blooper. Bishki's bathroom bloopers. Sorry. You did, man. You, you got, I mean, there's, there, you, there's you, every time I would have gotten up, it would have been a blooper. The funny part, like, though, is that you got up right on a fade to black, so you couldn't see anything. Yeah. So Bishki was just standing in the middle of the eye bag. He got caught up, in the dark. He rose down, stood right in front of me. Caught in the darkness. <laughs> it was just yeah. dark. And then when Bishki left, we're, you always know shit's going to get good when Bishki finally gets out of the theater. Like when he leaves, that's when shit blows yeah, up. I kind of get excited when he goes. I do too. I'm and like, something, something's rip. We had a big. <laughs> A big montage of a utopian future that old Caesar was designing, and it was split screens. And then it went into this giant mass of Megalon cubes and Magic crystals. Because you know, there's a little bit fractals. of a murder mystery in this that they don't really. Yeah, you missed the shot, you know, with the ruler, Dave. You didn't see that, right? <laughs> no, no. I didn't Where he's see that. measuring his head and then there's the magic golden mirrors. <laughs> it's this... And it's a golden shower all over your face. Listen, mm. there's no way. <laughs> That you listening can comprehend anything that we're saying because it's so fucking Can't bug up. shit. Crazy. So I think we just got to go with the Megalopolis Bones. I can feel it in the bones. <laughs> with what little we have processed. Brother Bisky, you are first to bone. Oh, man. First to bone. Copley, you mad man. He's a mad mad lad. I was not expecting to (laughs) 
experience what I just experienced. I, <laughs> it should have been in 3D. Oh, it yeah. should have been. You know? It should have been. Why not? Those arrows in yeah, 3D. Come but on. I, um, early on, I was just like, I, I'm trying to process. Sorry. Yeah. yeah Processing. Yeah. No, but for this, for this topsy turvy world, this is, this is a topsy turvy <laughs> Coppola movie we, I needed. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, no, this is like up there with Cloud Atlas. Yes. And yes, whoa, it fucking whoa. is. Some of those just crazy ambitious bombs that we love in, <laughs> in to watch in the movie lodge i mean yeah i had fun with a lot of the performances i think how I, was tom hanks not involved no i know <laughs> but i thought aubrey plaza was 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 funny yeah, she's having a great time and, and she was having a good time wild platinum shout wild out platinum and i thought shia was, LaBeouf great. was great as his uh performance and and Adam Driver did his best, and then yeah. and then you get John Voight doing weird stuff all the <laughs> time. And they the have time. big statues made screen. of these people. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got a statue. <laughs> no, I'm going to be processing this for a long time. Yes. But, but right off the bat, despite the boredom, I got on its wavelength, and I'm just kind of buzzing off yeah, of Copeland's insanity. And I'm going to give it three balls. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Yes, Bishki. That is correct. Yeah. I mean, it's woo. as we process more. Who knows? Who knows yeah. what the what the calcium content will do? What the yeah. levels will bring? Yeah. All right, brother Nathan, mm. processing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. waves and waves of that you know floaty, watery, golden <laughs> light. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, visually, visually, I was I was just like on board. Yeah, I just thought each, each sequence of this. You know, it, you don't really need to know or buy into this new Rome. It's just this the, the city or any city. You know, he's trying right. to keep some things vague, he, which, which I thought was, uh, you know, I, I thought it was an interesting way to go. There's some mystery there that, that was intriguing with the fractals and where he finds it and all this stuff. Right. He, uh, when he gets his face half blown off <laughs> um, in, in sort of a, um, you know. A uh, fan of the opera. Yes. <laughs> Wait, it was very and, fan. And, and he carried himself that way. Um, I was even more involved. I was just like, oh, this is. Just... <laughs> and uh, yeah, props to Adam Driver. I mean, he can just like, he, he can just like look to you and give yeah. you all his double chin. Just that's the face, <laughs> you know, and, it, and it's something pivotal or something where he needs to look heroic and he doesn't. And and that's why I like him. You know, I, yeah. I, I, he is sort of like, you know, uh, human and, 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 and I could see why Francis would choose him. Yeah. He's dynamic and, and he's intriguing just by himself. He looks different um, every angle. Angle they shoot him. So, so you know that carried me. That carried me through to process all this. You know, wild, wild pretension is really is what it was on display, and it's yes. sentimental, mm-hmm. and he underlines things. Yeah, uh, and there's real tacky shit in it. You know, the the intertitle cards that have this stone granite. They yeah. look tacky. Yeah. Quasi Roman bullshit. Um, <laughs> I, I can't believe that looks so. I was I was trying to make that thing below it the Dracula head. You know, yeah, like yeah, the Dracula yeah, yeah. One sheet, the Bram Stoker. <laughs> you were doing that too, right? Elsa? Yes, I think that's um, what he was going for. But mm. there's so much to chew on. Audrey Plaza's over here. Holy shit! You know, there's just there's just all this stuff you know flying at you, and 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 I will need to process it. Yes, but I'll come up with I'll come with two two and a half bones. Two is point right five. where I'm at because you know there could be just this this three bone wonder like Cloud Atlas that sneaks up on me. <laughs> yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. All right, two point five from Brother Nathan. I sense a hothead coming into Megalopolis. I think the audience. All aboard. The audience screwed you. Francis Frankie Ford Mustang Cocaine Coppola. (laughs) Well, well. 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 (laughs) I don't think there's much to process. I think you guys are just like psyching yourselves out. You'll forget about this on the drive Not a chance. Oh, man. I think it's... uh, like understuffed and overbaked Ooh. in this case. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And it kind of makes Cloud Atlas look like Citizen Kane. It makes mm. Cloud oh, Atlas look you. like Cloud I love that Atlas. You said that about Cloud Atlas. But it's shocking because, like, if you had never seen any of Coppola's 1970s or 80s work, you would assume that the person who made this film tonight and only seen Tommy Wiseau or Neil Breen, <laughs> you know, a tour driven films. Oh, come on. Yeah. No, for real. Okay. This, this is embarrassing. This is like going to go down in history as one of the biggest vanity project fiascos I mean, in the history of Hollywood cinema. Like, and it yeah. makes me cringe on a deep cosmic level that he like 
screen this for all the studio heads, assuming <laughs> they were going to be clamoring to like bid on this, you know, and no one did. <laughs> so he had to like pay for Lionsgate to essentially like help him release it. But he's the one paying for the marketing and for all the screens and stuff and $4 million opening weekend on a hundred and something million budget yeah. is, is, is a pretty big failure. And I know, yeah, the critics, there's a lot of people giving them love like you guys are because yeah, the <laughs> themes or, you know, the, the personal vision or it is, you know, I guess slightly different from some of the other stuff we've been watching, but not in the way, slightly, <laughs> not in the way that slightly. <laughs> yeah. I just really don't know what to say, except you got to see it in the theater. Otherwise, you're going to, like, turn it off at home. You're never going to finish this. Yeah, well, that's, be, that we agree let's on. Be, that's we can real. all agree on that. <laughs> um, there, Megalopolis, now on VOD. There's really nothing good about it, except maybe the costumes, because mm. everyone was dressed in Armani or Prada or whatever that was. But Everybody's I'm sure, looking good. I'm sure it was fancy clothes. John Everybody Carlos is Vizito. looking good. He's looking Even John good. Boyd's looking kind of good. Yeah. But, yeah, it didn't really add up to much in the end uh and the, all the croutons didn't really give me a full belly you know the way the way some other films have salad dragons they give me at least a bite of something fresh and green and crispy uh so for this film uh -oh. i will give it one bone for you know the the epic development process and effort of getting it made yeah, and yeah. and not only did his wife pass away but one of his longtime producing partners Fred Roos also mm -hmm. passed away mm -hmm. so I was kind of surprised he didn't give him uh, a memoriam card either but uh, I will give it a half a bone for Fred Roos one and a half bones one and a uh, half okay. Okay. not okay. bad okay. not bad Lucas I thought you were gonna hit it harder than that well it is true it is going to go down as one of the biggest vanity project flop ascos of all time and that is too bad because it will be solidified as such by people who have not seen it and don't understand it have just right. read think right. pieces about it and think they fucking know about it but they didn't sit down in the imax and focus both barrels of their eyeballs <laughs> directly at this thing for two hours and 18 minutes. Because when you come out of that, you realize, you feel the ambition, like, coursing through it. Mm -hmm. Especially, I'm glad that we went in early to see all the trailers leading up to Megalopolis. <laughs> yeah. Because it's all fucking dog shit. Yeah. It is just... Red one. It is A lot just, of Lionsgate dog shit. It's the end of cinema. <laughs> yeah. Just sprawling out across this wasteland. It's, <laughs> cinema's already dead. It's just zero ambition, just dead. It's just it's just hitting cinema with a defibrillator and it jumps a little bit, but it's not real because the, the corpse is dead. And then something like Megalopolis comes on in defiance of all that is commercial being, being purchased by <laughs> studios. The man has to put a hundred and thirty million dollars of his own money wow. just to just to help us to see this on a big screen like it deserves to be seen. The only way it should ever be seen. And yeah. he's getting killed for it. Yeah, he's being martyred for it. But. Again, fear not, Francis. Once your soul dithers off into the golden ether, people will find this movie. They will find it, and they will reappraise it. And it will be kind of like how Ishtar has gotten a little bit of a bump, Ooh, in, bump. in the years since that, you know, people just made fun of it. You know, like this will also be reappraised. And I have utter confidence in that. The visuals will stay with me forever. I've never seen anything like this. And I am deep. I have go I, watch sky captain. I, tomorrow. <laughs> it's not sky captain. It's beyond. It's beyond sky captain. I have deep, deep gratitude to Mr. Coppola for bleeding his blood, sweat and tears all over the IMAX screen. All of his money goes so that we could just see this glimmer of light tonight. This is three B -b 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 bones and uh yeah and that's even with the <laughs> progress bar like one fourth of the way across the computer screen because i'm still trying to figure out what the fuck right. just happened get a process yeah. time too all over the map in the edge tonight bishki i would love 
I would love to know what the Rotten Tomatoes score is. Let's settle it. It's time I settle the score. Be honest. Has anybody in here looked at the Rotten Tomatoes? I don't believe in Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, great. So... (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> you got that you got that Coppola bump where critics are going to bend over backwards probably trying to figure out how to praise this but I think it's going to be hard for them because yeah. their peers are going to make fun of them so they're trying <laughs> to figure out how to do it I think I think maybe a 62 and this is the critics this is critics mm, that's high a little too high I'm going to go uh Mm. It's rot- go, it's rotten, folks. Mm. I'm gonna go 30, 38. Yeah, I'll go a little, thirty. A little higher. Thirty eight. Um, Forty three. Forty seven. Forty seven. I'll take it. That's, I'll take that's it. Pretty high I'll lock for it something in. like that this. IMAX audience. What were they thinking? Oh shit. Oh. The IMAX and so the twenty percent. Oh, it's got to be no. lower. Yeah, it's, it's got to be in the toilet. Um, seventeen. No, 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 not that far in the no, toilet. No, they don't go that low. Thirty six. Very close. Thirty four. Oh. See, yeah. people don't That's understand it right now. We yeah. don't, we, we need like, we need 10 more years, 20 more years, and then it'll come back. I promise. <laughs> You'll bark like a dog. You'll, you will howl and bark like a woodland creature. Like an owl or whatever the hell. Like that that guy was having a great time. Yeah. I want to know what his bones are. Yeah. I think he was four gleaming golden bones. God bless him wherever he ends up tonight out in the woods or wherever he lives. That's Megalopolis, folks. God bless you, Francis, man. God bless you. Still may, alive. May you live to somehow make another movie. I don't know. Clint's got a new one. You could do another one. Just <laughs> yeah, do it quick. Yeah. Do it quick, Francis. Just do it quick. Let's cheap. do it live. Do it what cheap. if we did it live? Do a live movie, <laughs> Do it fucking live. Bring Roman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother Nate, thank you for, oh, for thank joining you. us. Thank, thank you. It's you a circle complete after Godfather yeah. 3. Yeah. It really is. It is. And uh, to you out there, wait till it's on the big screen before you set foot into Megalopolis. Love and light, y'all. Love and light. Love and light. Love and golden showers. Francis Frankie Ford Mustang Cocaine Coppola.